Hey everybody, it's the Modern Native. So, I'm downloading up some wood, cutting some logs, because the next couple of days is going to be uh, well into the negatives, and that's before the wind chill. But I wanted to share a little experience that happened last night with some tips and some knowledge that I ended up, you know, realizing and acquiring with it. It's one of those things that I knew it ahead of time, but you just don't always think about it, but I had a little bit of a reinforcing uh, event that I won't let that happen again. So I was out on my water run, going down to the creek with the buckets and filling them up, but I got to the creek and it was frozen. I was able to walk out a good eight, nine feet, and it was like almost frozen solid. I got to the thin point, and I walked out stomped on it to start breaking the layers. First stomp, cracked it. Second stomp, I lost my balance and went in up to my knee. Luckily I was wearing my BDUs, the old military pants, and my waterproof Thinsulate boots. So no water actually made it into my boot, and but everything was soaked. My foot, my, my boot, my pant leg, into my socks and my underpants that I I wear either pajama pants underneath my pants or thermals to try to keep my body insulated. I'm out here doing stuff all the time. But I was soaked and as soon as I pulled my foot out, it was one of those damn it moments. Felt like an idiot because I knew I shouldn't have been doing that. I shouldn't have stomped it. I shouldn't have been trying to break the ice with my foot. So first tip right there is whenever you need to break some ice to actually get to the water, use a sledgehammer, an axe, hatchet, pry bar, whatever, whatever you got to break the ice. I don't care if you pick up a big rock and throw it down. That'll be better than using your foot because lesson learned. I knew that, but it's one of those, you know, didn't think about it, went out wasn't prepared because I didn't think that that spot was going to be frozen because it moves kind of fast but as soon as my foot was in the water and I pulled it back out thought to myself I'm like damn it I still got shit I got to do I got to get this done but I only have a half an hour now because like I talked in my live at that temperature I only got about a half an hour before frostbite starts to sit in so I had to do my water run got my wood loaded into the house and had to take the dogs for a walk because once I got my pants and my boot off I wasn't going to be going outside until my temp came back up so it was a little lesson learned but it was also a pretty decent experience because it's part of the conditioning when I do my survival challenge my creek dip you know it's not going to be that cold because I'm going to do it on a day where it's not in the negatives but it's still going to be cold because it's the middle of winter but that was a real learning experience with always being mindful and thinking ahead of time and even if it's an inconvenience going back and getting the proper tool to do what I need to accomplish so a little bit of a tidbit there for you, a little bit of a story. Uh, I managed to get everything done that I needed to do, hurried it up, got it done, came inside. Now, one of the biggest things with a situation like that, you can't warm yourself up too fast. That can put body parts into shock, that can cause tissue damage. It, it, it's not a good situation. So what I did is I went inside, stripped down, and the top of my pants, my, I wear uh, pajama pants or thermals underneath my pants to insulate myself. So when I dropped everything, I took my feet, put them together, and wrapped them in my pajama pants to warm them up. The wife helped me out. She got me some uh, dry socks and some uh, pants and the clothes that I needed. Once I was able to get myself back up to temp, I started feeling better. But there was numbness, tingling and this burning sensation. One of the things most people don't think about is when one part of you gets dunked 
and gets super, super cold, there is a physical response inside your body. You almost feel hot and sweating. I was drenched on my upper body because my whole body went, <coughs> my whole body went hot, and I was just sweltering and sweating. So, all of my layers had to come off. I had to switch all of my clothing because I couldn't keep that dampness on me because you could feel that chill reverberating up my body once the heat, once that, that burning sensation went away. I was able to catch it in time. I don't have any tissue damage. I might have a little bit of uh, nerve damage or some minor, minor tissue damage on the tip of my toes. Uh, still a little tingly. Some of my toes are a little numb. And there's almost like a burn spot where I'm pretty sure my sock had kind of frozen to my foot. So when I pulled it off, I lost some tissue on top of my foot. But it's an experience. And it sucked. But am I right? And we... So the cold sat my battery and it died. But uh, what I was saying was, is we caught it in time. We fixed it fast enough. So, I didn't have to worry about permanent damage or extensive damage. But, I just wanted to share that with you guys and uh, drop a little knowledge with it. So that way, if anybody ever runs into that kind of situation, they have a few little tidbits and a little bit of advice from my own experience and from my own knowledge. So, that's that. Until next time, get out there, be a native, and go beast.